Should India recognize Taiwan? Taiwan is in the news, quite a bit, lately. People around the globe are wondering, if it's time Taiwan should be recognized as a separate country. Some international pundits believe, if India establishes direct diplomatic relations with Taiwan, it will be a game changer for the Asian continent, and the world will follow thereafter. In the past few years, China has been increasingly hostile towards India. Despite India's best attempts to forge a strong relationship with China, the current president, Xi Jinping, had tried every possible way, to sabotage India's growth. China's aggression in the last few years, including a border skirmish, has made India to ponder over, what's the future of their relationship with China. Let's look at the history of India-China relationship in the past few decades, to understand how their ties have shaped up. When the Communist took over the mainland of China, on October 1, 1949, the newly independent India, under their Prime Minister, Nehru, was one of the first countries to recognize the Communist control of China. When the Civil War ended in China in 1949, the ruling Kuomintang government headed by Chiang Kai-shek was defeated, and Chiang Kai-shek sailed through, to the island of Taiwan, which continued with the name, Republic of China. The newly formed communist government under Mao Zedong, controlled the mainland, and it was called, People's Republic of China, or PRC, for short. The Western powers, spearheaded by the United States, recognized the government of Republic of China, based in Taiwan, as the official China, and allowed them to represent China, in the UN. The Indian Prime Minister, Nehru, was very much aligned with the communist China, and planned to build a strong relationship with them. In order to please the PRC, India also made a decision of not recognizing Taiwan. During the early 1970s, the United States, under Henry Kissinger and President Nixon, decided to change their foreign policy, and flipped. They made a sudden U-turn, and accepted that the PRC under Mao, will be the official China, in the United Nations. This made Taiwan, also known as Republic of China, to be kicked out of the UN, and several of its affiliate organizations. In the next few years, most countries of the world started recognizing PRC as the real China. Mao Zedong was very insistent, that, in order to have diplomatic relationship with the PRC, countries have to abandon any relationship they have with Taiwan. This was commonly called as the One China Policy. In other words, Taiwan soon became an orphan, with very few countries around the world recognizing it. Subsequently, most nations didn't have a Taiwanese embassy in their land, nor had their own embassy in Taiwan, though some of them had de facto embassies, under strange names like, Taiwan Economic and Cultural Center, Taiwan Association, etc. The communist-controlled People's Republic of China, considered Taiwan, which was officially known as Republic of China, as one of their provinces, which they wanted to annex either by peace, or by force. So, they applied a lot of pressure on all nations, trying to prevent such unofficial Taiwanese diplomatic centers, but they were largely unsuccessful. Well, our discussion here is about India, and their diplomatic relations with China, and Taiwan. So, let's focus on India then. India was very eager to develop strong relations with China, from the earliest stages of the formation of the PRC, in 1949. India had just gotten independence from Britain, a couple of years earlier, and had formed a democratic government, under their Prime Minister, Nehru. Nehru was in charge of the Foreign Ministry as well. Nehru, along with his sister, Ms. Vijayalakshmi Pandit, and a close confidant and friend, Krishna Menon, laid the foundation for India's foreign policy. Nehru himself had a huge bias towards China, and Krishna Menon put in additional weight, to tilt India further towards China, due to his strong dislike for the West, especially, the United Kingdom, and the United States. With a keen interest in pursuing a pro-China policy, India put enormous efforts to keep China happy. Despite Mao Zedong's reluctance to show similar enthusiasm, India pursued a strong diplomatic, cultural, and trade relations with China. Obviously, 
India showed no interest to establish any form of link with Taiwan, as it will irk China. Nehru personally put in a lot of efforts to build close ties with China, and he dreamt of an Asian Grand Alliance with China. Nehru's sister, Ms. Pandit, and his daughter, Indira Gandhi, who later became the Indian Prime Minister, made trips to China, and promoted people-to-people -people contact, between the two giant neighbors. On China's side, Zhou Enlai, who was the premier and second in line to Mao Zedong, was the primary contact for India. China attacked Tibet in 1959, caused heavy casualties to the Tibetan people, and eventually annexed Tibet. Tibet was under a peaceful spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama. The communist forces were too strong, for any defense put by Tibetan people, and the Dalai Lama himself escaped from the Chinese forces, reached India, and sought asylum. Nehru decided to grant asylum on humanitarian grounds, though the Chinese leadership preferred the Dalai Lama to be returned to them, with the intention of imprisoning the spiritual leader, or even worse. From this point on, China's relations with India deteriorated. Mao and China turned against India, and waged an unprovoked war, in 1962, annexing territories belonging to India, an area equivalent to slightly larger than Switzerland. India was made to realize, despite its acceptance of China's sovereignty over the mainland, as well as Taiwan, China had now grabbed India's land illegally. Nehru, who had put his entire focus on promoting better relations with China, was bitter, but he still didn't change his policy towards Taiwan. In fact, it took another 33 years, until 1995, for Taiwan to establish a representative office in India. This became the de facto embassy of Taiwan in India, as well as for many neighboring countries in the area. India also established India Taipei Association in Taiwan, to act as their unofficial embassy. However, India still maintained a one-China policy, which officially recognized the PRC as the only China. The constant border encroachment of China into India, eroded any goodwill left, even in an amicable India. Since 2010, India stopped openly professing their one China policy. China had developed a notion, that there should be only one superior power in Asia, and that should be China. It believed if China doesn't proactively support elements against India's growth, India may turn into a competitor in many areas, and challenge China. China followed a diligent policy to undermine India, and carefully laid out plans to prevent India from rising. Let's list them below. 1. China promoted terrorist groups and leaders condemned around the world, that operated against India, and emanating from Pakistan, by vetoing any sanctions against these terrorist groups, or its leaders. 2. China was funding and supporting the fundamentalist communist forces, known as Maoists within India, whose primary goal was to stop any industrialization and economic growth of India. 3. In all international forums, China voted against India, as the sole member, including the Nuclear Suppliers Group, consistently, every time it came up for voting. 4. China was the sole member in the UN Security Council, to oppose India's entry into it. 5. China started constructing roads within the Indian Territory, violating its sovereignty, as part of the Belt and Road Initiative. 6. China dumped electronic goods, plastic toys, and other cheap products flooding the Indian market, through illegal routes, using Nepal as their corridor, and thereby bleeding the local industries. 7. China engaged in border conflicts multiple times, and started grabbing Indian land, a small area each time, using a policy known as salami slicing. 8. China engaged in encircling India, by influencing or coercing countries in the region, through a policy, known as String of Pearls. 9. China forced two of India's neighbors, Sri Lanka and Pakistan, into a debt trap, and pushed them to lease ship ports, to be used for activities against India. Despite all this, India had tried to maintain a peaceful coexistence, until June 2020, when China pushed India too far, 
by engaging in a border skirmish in Golwan Valley, in the Lodok region, killing 20 Indian soldiers, as well as losing unaccounted number of Chinese soldiers. Since then, India had engaged in a policy of dealing with China, in a way that best fits them. Many military analysts, both, Indian and international, have openly advocated for India to recognize Taiwan, and establish strong relations with them. Recently, this has gained a lot of ground and acceptance in many circles. The Indian people, media and the political establishment see China has no intention of a peaceful coexistence with India, leaving India with no option, but to build appropriate defenses and alliances. Taiwan will be a perfect partner in this regard for India. Many believe if India opens up with Taiwan, it will change many nations in Asia to follow suit, including the ASEAN countries. We believe India should trailblaze this path, for the rest to follow. Thanks for watching.